With uh, the importance of, uh, you know, kind of coming to a conference like this one, uh, where you're engaging kind of the uh, you've got a little bit but also activists. Yes, I always, I always enjoy uh, speaking to uh, college-age students. Uh, they were an integral part of our success in our last campaign, and uh, I, I enjoy spending time with uh, our youth. And I think, you know, we talked about the issues that I ran on and believe in are partisan issues, issues like reigniting the economy, uh, being fiscally uh, sane, uh, liberty issues, freedom issues. Uh, those, those issues aren't Democrat or Republican. So I really enjoy spending time with college students whenever we can, and our, and our campaign is always energized by them. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very important to show that there's a youth that there's a place for them in the in the Republican Party, and and most of the youth college students I talk to are very interested in liberty, very interested in freedom. Uh, they don't want to see us constantly at war. Uh, my daughter's 15 years old and all she has known is war her entire life. And uh, they don't want to live in their parents' basements when they graduate. is a big issue. And uh, they know that this economy is not performing like it should be. So uh, I, think, I think we've got a great opportunity to attract youth to the Republican message. Tonight you're appearing with Scott Walker. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think mean, he's made a pretty, pretty quick rise. Uh, obviously hasn't announced yet officially. But what's it like to see uh, his, his kind of rise? Yes, well, he, you know, he's a governor, so he's been the chief executive of his state, and uh, you know, he's had to legislate as opposed to just talk. Uh, so, and uh, so, I think that appeals to people, and he's uh, taken some tough stands and hung in there even through a recall uh, election and won. And I think the Republican Party is uh, there's a big chunk of the Republican Party that's looking for a candidate that is willing to stand up. And be, and be a leader. Uh, I'm not endorsing Governor Walker. I don't, I don't plan to endorse anyone. I want to get as many of these candidates who are all tremendous. We've got a very deep group of candidates this year. I want to get them to the 1st District and uh, introduce them to uh, the people that I know and our vote, voters in the 1st District. So we're looking forward to the event tonight. What's it like having somebody like him, like you said, has had to go on record and legislate and get an executive leader, but to a certain extent, he can be kind of polarizing in that sense, kind of labor how does that throw a monkey wrench in yeah, can you get some of that last his stance on something is very clear? I think it goes back to a, a person's vision or version of leadership. And uh, I think if you're a true leader, you're going to be somewhat polarizing sometimes. And you're not going to be popular. If you're popular with every single group in the electorate, then I think you stand for nothing. And uh, so uh, the, the fact that there's certain groups uh, uh, of people or citizens that maybe don't agree with uh, a, a candidate on certain issues. I mean, I have that myself as well, and uh, that's all part of uh, part of our uh, democracy. But I think as being a leader, once again, everybody's not going to agree with you on every issue, just like everybody doesn't agree with our current president on every issue. One of the things we cared about Governor Walker to a certain extent was that he didn't finish college. He doesn't have a college degree. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you think that that's going to change? Uh, you know, if he does continue to be a serious candidate. Oh, I, I, I personally think uh, it doesn't matter at all if he has a college degree. Some of the most successful people in the business world in the last 30 years that I've met do not have college degrees. I mean, a college degree does not mean that you're necessarily smart. And uh, I've often been one uh, to think that hard work ethic uh, will make up for uh, a degree hanging on the wall most days of the week. Just kind of one last one for you. What's the importance of bringing everybody to the first team? And introducing those candidates to people that you represent, uh, so that they can get that that kind of look that Iowans are used to. Uh, you know, where they, they have candidates sit down in their in their you know living room, local coffee shop. Well, the old, the old joke uh, around Iowa is, well, I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for for president because I've only met with each one of them three times. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, th I think it's great that you can't come into Iowa. I'm glad we're first in the nation because uh, you can't come in here with just money and, and buy this election, to buy the caucus. That is, this is retail politics. People want to see you up close, eyeball to eyeball, and want to hear you know, about your vision for the country, and they want their questions answered. So it isn't like you can just come in here and run TV ads and win. And I, I think that's why it's important that Iowa is first in the nation uh, with the caucus. Great. Thank you.